Hi guys and welcome back. Well, today I'm going to talk about why I think Intel's dominance in the CPU market is going to come to an end in the next two to five years. Now, when I say CPU market, I'm not just talking about the desktop or consumer market that we all get so excited about, but I'm also talking about the data center market that accounts for a large amount of the income Intel currently receives. Now before you start saying, come on man, that'll never happen, well it can, no company is too large to fail or too large to lose market share. And there are a number of reasons that I think this is a real possibility in the coming years. But to understand why, I think we're going to have to look at the markets that Intel currently serves CPU hardware to. First, let's look at the consumer or desktop market. Now Intel calls this the client computing group when they're re reporting revenue. This includes everything from a laptop you might pick up in Best Buy all the way to the $1700 6950X 10 core beast. Now, currently this is a very lucrative market for Intel, with them reporting a revenue of $8.9 billion in quarter 3 of 2016 alone. Now that's up 5% from the quarter 3 in 2015. Now you might say, whoa, that's amazing. How can they lose from this point? Well, there's a couple of things I think we need to think about to truly understand why I think this market share is going to be eroded. Number one, and probably most importantly for me, is the very poor performance numbers that are circulating for their upcoming Kaby Lake architecture. Now this looks more like a Skylake refresh than a new architecture to me. You don't have to look too far on the internet to see the lukewarm reception this is getting. And this is also continuing a long tradition for Intel product releases. Now it's well documented and we are all too familiar with the TikTok marketing strategy that Intel has been using for the past six years or so. Now this was fine when there was no real competition in the space and I'll come back to this in a minute, but how long are consumers going to accept this level of glacial performance increase every year? And what's worse is that even when a new architecture is released, the previous one still holds the majority of its original retail price, begging the question, why should I upgrade? Now coming back to the point I made earlier around competition, for the past five years Intel has had no competition in this space, so you can't really blame them for sitting on their hands and milking the consumer with mediocre performance increases year on year. I mean let's be honest, they're a business and they're there to make money like any other company is. Recently however, AMD announced their Zen architecture, which on the face of it looks like it will be able to compete toe to toe with the latest Intel offerings. This is exciting not only because consumers will now have a choice to make when they're purchasing a CPU or pre-built machine, but also because of AMD's historical pricing beha behavior being very aggressive at launch. How are Intel going to respond to this? Ultimately, it will all play out next year, but it seems a strong possibility that for the first time in almost a decade, Intel may, may see their market share in the consumer, consumer sector start to be eroded. So that's just one market space that I think Intel could face large challenges in in 2017. The second is what they call the data center group, which most of us would now know as the server space or deep learning space. In quarter three of 2016 alone, they reported a revenue of $4.5 billion. Now that's up 10% from the same quarter in 2015. At this point, Let's now consider that those two markets that have just been discussed account for 13.4 billion of the 15.8 billion dollars in revenue that Intel reported for quarter three in 2016. Or in other words, 85% of the generated revenue for that quarter. Uh, clearly, these are two markets that Intel would prefer not to be challenged in. Unfortunately for them, however, I've read a number of articles recently that I think point to their market share also being eroded in, these space, in this space over time. The first major issue I feel they are facing is that a large amount of the data center market is shifting towards GPU use for deep learning applications. This has been highlighted by companies such as Nvidia supplying hardware specifically designed for this purpose in the form of the P100. AMD have also recently announced their re-entrance into the market with the release of the Naples CPU, a Zen-based uh, server chip, but coupled with a new MI line of GPUs based on the Vega architecture at the high end. This was highlighted when AMD signed a deal to supply hardware to Alibaba, the world's largest online retailer, in October of 2016. 
And simply put, Intel cannot compete in this segment of the market as they don't make GPUs. Now, secondly, is that Intel's own production process is starting to fall behind. In November of this year, Qualcomm announced that they would be bringing a 48 core, 10 nanometer FinFET ARM server chip to market. Now, currently, Intel are stuck on 14 nanometers and finding it hard to move to the 10 nanometer process. They are also only offering a 24 core chip at maximum in the form of the E7-8890V4. The new ARM chip is called the Centric 2400 series. And it's claimed to bring a server solution designed with total cost of ownership in mind while bringing power energy efficiency as well. I don't know what any of that really means, but if Qualcomm can offer a chip with more raw computing power at a lower TDP and footprint relative to core count, I think they could make a big impact on the data center market and really erode some market share from Intel. Now, Intel also have another three large divisions that report revenue into the final numbers, but between them, they only accounted for 15% of the total revenue reported in quarter three, 2016. Now don't get me wrong, 15% of $15.8 billion is a large amount of money, but relative to Intel's market portfolio, that isn't going to preserve their bottom line which is what all businesses are really interested in. So guys, there we have it. I think I've laid out the evidence for my opinion on Intel losing at least some of its market share in these coming years. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to be driven out of business and into the history books, far from it. But I do think that Intel will be entering largely uncharted waters for them due to the dominance they've enjoyed in all the markets they serve for the pa they've served for the past decade. How they choose to address this is going to be very interesting and could be very beneficial for us in the consumer market, which forms the majority of, the re of their revenue stream. For instance, are we going to see price drops in Cabby Lake if Zen is released to market with very aggressive pricing? Will this technological pressure that other companies such as Qualcomm are bringing to bear in 2017 force Intel to truly innovate once again? Guys, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm looking forward to the fight that will develop in 2017 for our hard-earned cash. Well guys, it's time for me to wrap this bad boy up. Now I'd just like to take this chance to say thanks to everyone who supported me in the channel during 2016 and, and you know you've made it a really great year for me. I can't wait for 2017 and the changes I've got planned and you're going to be involved in. As always, if you like the video guys, like it. Um, and don't forget to comment with your thoughts and if you're enjoying the content, why not subscribe? Guys, bye for now, and I'll catch you again in another great tech video.